What's up YouTube, Thrift Hunter here with this week's garage sale and estate sale finds. Been super busy, I've bought a lot of things, I've spent a lot of money, uh, some good purchases, some bad purchases, I'm just going to kind of go through everything. It's going to be another probably pretty long video. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to try and go uh, quickly to show everything. I bought this vase for $5. It's unmarked, uh, but it's uh, got a nice color to it. It's got a lot of uh, sparkliness to it. This could be Dale Tiffany. This could be Pier 1. Uh, since it's not marked on the bottom, I have no idea. But for 5 bucks, uh, I don't think I can go wrong with that. I picked up this piece. I think it's pretty interesting. It was only $6. Uh, it's not in the best condition, but it looks super old. Um, it's a planter. And it's got all these really cool designs. I'm not sure if it's Chinese or what, but it's got all of these nice little scenes on the side. Uh, it feels like it could be uh, brass, could be pop metal, I have no idea. Um, it does have a crack right here that's pretty bad. And it's got some splitting right here. Um, but really, that doesn't bother me uh, at all. I think this piece is pretty cool. It's probably got a little bit of value. I know if it's old enough that it's uh, definitely worth more than six bucks. So uh, I picked that up. Uh, you also notice that I'm using this uh, cool little tent. I finally broke down and bought a semi-professional tent uh, and some new lights. I really like it so far. It was only forty bucks I think on eBay you know that they sell these little kits uh, it comes with a bunch of backgrounds it comes with two lights it comes with a stand and this uh, this tent here and uh, you know I really like it uh, I also bought a new set of testing acids a new loop a new scale um, really inexpensive if you want to get started in the garage sale picking business uh, those are your just must-haves you must have a nice camera a light booth and some sort of lights. Uh, I, I used a homemade one out of a cardboard box for years um, and it cost me five bucks at Michael's on some fabric. Uh, really easy to do and then I bought some work lights. Um, I need to get new bulbs for those because the lights that came with uh, the kit are pretty weak so I'm gonna get some new ones. Um, but yeah I'm all set up. I feel really good about those purchases and it was totally worth it. So I got a whole box full of train parts. I don't know much about trains and scales and which ones are expensive or anything like that. Uh, I just saw a whole box full. It's got like buildings, um, a bunch of trains, a bunch of parts, uh, signs, like all kinds of junk for 25 bucks for the, for the whole lot. And it came with a bunch of track and I'll show you that in a second. Um, but there's little buildings, um, there's a bunch of train cars, and this whole box is full of different ones. Some of them are in good condition, some of them aren't. Um, most of the ones in here are Tyco, um, which don't carry a ton of value, but I can sell it all together. I'm sure someone will buy it. I'm sure I'll get more than my money for it. Um, but I'll go ahead and show you the track and a couple of the better pieces here. So here's some of the track. This is a whole big box full of track. I haven't counted all the pieces yet. I'm guessing something like 50 or 60 pieces of track. I know that some of the turns and different things can all sell individually. I'll sell it all together. Um, a lot of it is Tyco, uh, but there's also two looks like uh, Transformers. And this right here is a Lionel train uh, controller. Uh, there's a bunch of track, a bunch of wires, all that kind of stuff. That was part of the $25. And I'll show you some of the uh, cars here in a sec. These are some of the cars that I noticed when I uh, was just picking through the, the box and trying to decide if I wanted to buy it. Because I don't want to buy a bunch of plastic trains. I mean, they're just really not worth that much unless they're nice in the box and, you know, in mint condition. Um, but... I did notice a few of these ones, and they do have markings on the bottom. And this one is a Marks. And I've heard of Marks before, 
and I knew Mark's trains were usually pretty expensive. Um, this one's obviously a newer one because it's all plastic, but there's one Mark's. Uh, these all here are Mark's cars. There's another Mark right there. Pretty cool trains. Um, I believe that this um, engine here is a Mark's as well. Uh, the engine should be worth 25 bucks by itself, so uh, there's my money back right there. It's uh, not in the best condition, but it's pretty cool. It's got a little light on there. Um, there's another rail car, another Marks. Nice New York Central car, Marks. And the one in the back there is another Marks. So I think just for the Marks toys, that's, uh, that's my money back right there. Picked up a couple of knives here, um, just nice quality knives. These are Henkel knives. Um, they're not the most expensive in the world or anything, uh, but I just asked how much just because I, eh, I was kind of interested. She's like, oh, two bucks. And I'm like, okay, well, for two bucks, I can't really go wrong. Um, some actually pretty nice knives. I really like uh, that they're all serrated all the way through, so really makes it easier to cut some meat and stuff really nice um, bread cutter uh, we don't have a bread cutter so we're going to keep this for sure uh, we'll probably keep all these knives i tend to cook a lot so having a nice bread knife that's fully serrated makes it easier to cut and one little steak knife uh, nothing too fancy but i picked that up Where's my late 80s, early 90s kids at? We got some 90s, early 90s, late 80s uh, toys. These are all Ninja Turtles. Uh, I ended up paying 30 for the whole box. Um, wasn't the best deal in the world, but I think I'll be able to make a little bit on it. Um, there are all kinds of figures. There's a couple cars. Um, all these different turtles with all their accessories um, so I counted it it's something like 25 to 30 figures and about 60 accessories and there's all these little pieces in here all these different uh, guns and there's all the villains um, I'm sure you guys will know these better than I will um, but some of these are pretty cool. There are like six or seven that are from 88, which are the better ones because they're older. Um, but whole box of Ninja Turtles. So I did end up picking up some tools. There were some tools in the back shed and there was a bunch of people looking at them. And I was like, okay, they must have some good tools. Uh, so I started looking through the random uh, sockets and there was a couple good ones. So. A lot of these are Mac and Matco and Proto, um, which if you ever do machining or car work, uh, you'll, you'll have heard of them. Uh, this isn't all of them. I threw them all in my uh, toolbox already. But I bought about 15 sockets, a large extension, and this uh, wrench, and they're all Mac, Matco, and Proto. Uh, bought all of them for 10 bucks total. Um, and it's a really great deal if you ever have to go buy these new like out of the catalog um, They're like 30 bucks a socket uh, You can get them on sale like half off or like 15 bucks a piece, but still online They're worth about three to four dollars each uh, If you sell them individually if I were to sell like say the whole lot I'd maybe get uh, 40 or 50 bucks probably but I do a lot of car work uh, and I plan to do a lot of car work in the future, so I like to keep all my tools. Um, I fix all kinds of stuff for people, so I always use my tools. Um, you know, just something good to have around. Um, I also bought, which I don't, uh, which is out in the garage somewhere, um, a crowbar for a dollar. I mean, I, that was like a, a good deal because I don't have a crowbar, so um, great to use as a doorstop and then also for fixing stuff. So, um, yeah, I picked up that stuff. I picked up this pretty cool vase. Uh, looks obviously Italian to me. Uh, I see this style of Italian stuff all the time. Uh, everything at this, this uh, estate sale was pretty expensive. 
Um, and I was surprised when this was only six bucks. Uh, it does have a very, 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 very small little flea bite chip right there. Um, but it's on the white portion, so it's actually, you can't even really see it. Um, and that was probably why it was discounted, but a really nice vase. I think it's really awesome. Um, not sure what it's worth. Uh, it doesn't have a marking on the bottom, but it looks old enough. Um, probably a 30 or 40, 50, I don't know, dollar vase. Uh, but yeah, a nice little pickup there. Picked up this piece here. It is a, looks like a inlay abalone ball, a little decorator ball. I picked this one up. I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know what it is. It looks like it's uh, maybe laminated to some wood, something like that. I, I don't know where it's from, but that was eight bucks uh, for a nice little decorator piece. I think someone will pay me 30 or 35 bucks for that. No problem. It's nice and heavy, good quality. So grab that. I got this little Waterford paperweight. It was only $4. Uh, it needs to be cleaned up a little bit, but it looks like it's got absolutely no chips. Um, these are like 20 bucks, so a nice little piece of Waterford there for four. This, I picked up this knife. Uh, it is a western knife. You can see it's all rusted over. But the most important thing with uh, buying knives is you want to make sure that there's not a whole lot of chips to the blade and that the point is still there. So this one, the point is still there, and the blade does not look too dinged up. Um, that rust and stuff can be cleaned. Uh, nothing too bad came with the leather case. Little vintage western knife. These aren't the most expensive in the world, but if I can get it cleaned up a little bit nicer than this, which I don't know if I will. Maybe I'll soak it and give it a try. Maybe not. Probably a $30 knife. I'm getting my nice brand new uh, white background. Nice and dirty, uh, but it's all in good use. I picked up this little statue. It is marked on the bottom. It says made in Italy. Um, just a little spelter or bronze, I don't know. Uh, not worth that much, maybe about 20 bucks, but still a nice little find there. Um, eventually I'll just put a bunch of this small stuff together and list it all as one in one big box and hopefully someone will buy it all. Because um, I can't really move stuff that's like 20 bucks. It's kind of uh, not worth the time, but uh, I'll eventually find a buyer for this. Cool little piece. All right, nice little group of things here. Just a, a little Swiss uh, nobody. It's called a Phoenix watch. Uh, it's missing the crown. I just pick up these little things and wait till I get a bunch of them, put them in a lot. I always get like 100 bucks for, you know, maybe 10 of these type of watches. So uh, always good to pick those up. Uh, this is a little Camillus knife. Uh, it is the electrician knife, uh, not a very expensive one. Picked this up for maybe five bucks, uh, pretty good deal. I picked up these uh, tobacco pipes here. These are like nice uh, hand carved wood tobacco pipes. Uh, I think these were 10 bucks a piece, uh, which is a pretty good deal. Uh, I don't know how much they're worth. These are up for auction. Uh, hopefully I'll get some looks at those. Uh, here's the other one. This one actually came in the case. You can tell just uh, how old it is by looking at it. Um, and this one is really nice. It's got this uh, woman drinking some beer there. The uh, mouthpiece is broken, but nothing that can't be fixed. Got a little tiny chip there. You can see the white spot. But for 10 bucks, that's a no-brainer right there. And some pretty cool old uh, war savings pins, uh, there's a World's Fair one, um, and a Christmas one on a ribbon. Got that for a few bucks. And another creepy doll, because for some reason I cannot keep myself from buying these things. Um, but this one is a Putnam doll, or Putnam doll, uh, by Grace S. Putnam. Uh, this one is a 1981, I believe. Uh, it's got the clothes. It is missing the bonnet. I believe it had a bonnet. Um, bisque head, bisque arms. Uh, if I can get them out. Good condition, not broken. 
25 bucks. These uh, vary all over the place depending on the size, um, the collectability. Uh, I don't know how much this one's worth. Uh, I suspect uh, I'll probably get at least 40 bucks for it. Hopefully this one will sell. A bunch of my other dolls uh, haven't sold very well. So I'm still trying, I'm still learning, but I keep picking these things up. Um, my family just hates them because they're creepy looking. But there's another doll. Alright, a little bit of jewelry. I paid uh, 15 bucks for this pin right here. Uh, it's a Texaco Mexico pin marked sterling. It's a brooch slash pendant. Uh, 15 bucks is a little bit much, but not too bad. I usually get around 30 for a big pin, big silver pin like this. So there's that. Um, five bucks. Picked up a little Waltham 21 jewel ladies watch, uh, gold filled bezel. Uh, again, this goes in my watch lots. I just wait till I get a bunch of these. I find them all the time. Um, you guys have seen me probably buy over a hundred of these like little Swiss watches that don't have the gold filled back. Some of them do. Usually you want to look for the ones that have the gold back on them. But it's got a gold filled band, nice cord band. Pick that up. That goes in the lot. Little movable sterling baby carriage pendant or uh, charm. Uh, pretty cool. That was only a quarter. Um, nice. I think this is a uh, lapis. Maybe it's kind of a weird looking one. Uh, might have a different name, but that cool little gemstone necklace. Again, yeah, that was like a quarter. Uh, single pair of cufflinks. Old ones. A bunch of these uh, little high school whatever pins, gold filled, a lot of these things. Um, I hey, wait till I get a bunch of these. I have like almost 50 of them now. Uh, so I'm going to do a big lot of these little pins and I'm sure um, that will do really well. Uh, there is this pair of opal earrings. Sterling and opal. Very nice, very good color to these opals too. Um, these were again a quarter, pretty nice. Sterling charm, and a little sterling enamel bug. Oh, I forgot two little ones. Um, this, I believe, uh, is modernist. I guess you could call that modernist. It's just a couple lines, but um, that one is marked on the back, 925. That was a dollar. Pretty heavy, maybe six or seven grams. Nice little sterling piece. And then this uh, elephant looks like probably bone and not ivory. Uh, with a little silver top to it. Uh, I believe that's maybe Vishnu. I guess it's Indian. The elephant god. I don't know. Probably wrong. Maybe Vishnu was the one with all the hands. I don't know. But pick that up for a quarter. So I got this cool uh, beer stein. This might have been my best find uh, of the week. Uh, I took a big chance on this. I had paid 60 bucks, uh, and I don't pay 60 bucks for anything. So um, definitely just took a chance. You know, I did really well on that gold bracelet. I had a little extra money to try and uh, take some risk. Uh, and so I bought this piece, and I wasn't sure if it was going to be that great. Uh, I started looking at it. Uh, it looked pretty old. I know it's a good color, so I know I can sell blue because blue always sells. And then when I uh, opened it up, it had these papers inside, which say uh, Berlin KPM, which I've heard of before. And then it's also got an actual picture of this exact piece. Um, <clears throat> and the article goes on to talk about how this piece is from the mid-1800s. And it's really old, made in Germany and whatever, whatever, whatever. So I just bought it. Um, I think this is called the lithopane um, version where they would like take a stencil and roll it over the piece to make this design. Um, you can also see here the twin headed eagle. Um, I don't know what that mark is. I thought it was Imperial Russian, but it could be a Wilhelm. I don't know, the article talks about it, but this thing is in like mint condition for something that is potentially 150 years old. Um, it's also got some markings. I'm going to be pretty careful with this, or at least try to. It's got some markings underneath the lid. Um, it, I think it might be silver, so I, you know, 
I haven't tested it because it really doesn't matter if it's silver or not for this piece um, in particular. But I threw this up on eBay and have already got a $100 bid and a bunch of views. So uh, it turns out to be a pretty good gamble. Um, I don't know what it's worth. I think it could be worth 200 bucks, maybe. Um, it could be worth more for all I know. Could be a sleeper. So I picked that up, pretty good find. All right, I'm gonna start finishing up with some of the larger pieces. Um, I'm not gonna show everything. I mean, I've got a ton of stuff. Uh, some of the jewelry is already gone and some, you know, some my mom took. Um, I got two fishing poles for eight bucks a piece. Those are in the garage. Um, they're huge. I don't want to mess with them. Um, they had some West Berlin Dam, uh, Dam Quick reels on them. Um, those are like 20 bucks a piece, so I bought those. Uh, I also got this painting. It's a nice shape. I like how it's uh, a long painting. You can tell it's old. It's oil on canvas. The frame is what I really like. It's a really nice uh, old frame. And what you want to look for on paintings, because I don't buy a lot of paintings, you guys know this. But when the back looks like this, where it's all old and all stained and everything, this is what I want to see. Uh, if you turn something over that looks like uh, how it did on the front, and it's completely white on the back, that means it's for sure a reproduction, um, just an art gallery thing. Um, and this one actually made it super easy because... It says the name on it, painted in the early 1900s by Lily Minden Williams. That makes it really easy to look up. I looked it up. Um, it's not a professional like painter or anything, just a family member. Um, but definitely an old, old frame. Uh, this one's by the Meyer Frank Co. out of Portland, Oregon. Uh, they made a lot of frames. This is like totally Art Deco, probably period, early 1900s, like the uh, note says. I've got this up for auction for 100 bucks. I paid uh, paid 20, so it was really cheap uh, for an old painting. I mean, the the frame's worth 20 by itself, at least. Um, it's not in the best condition. You can see like you know a little bit of rust. Um, there's like some uh, I don't know like fuzz on it. I mean, it needs to be cleaned up, but there are people who can clean that. Uh, yeah, I got it up for 100 bucks at auction. So far, no bidders. Um, maybe there's like six watchers on it, so uh, I'm sure I'll be able to sell it eventually for more than what I paid, so pick that up. So you guys know I'm not one to buy a lot of clothes or linens or anything like this, uh, but this kind of caught my eye. It just caught my eye because it is like super old looking, and it's a quill, and it's like a patchwork quill. It's got tears and stains and whatever. Um, but I just saw this on the table and, you know, it's, it's, uh, pretty cool. Uh, the lady said it was out of Maine and I was just like, okay, well, how much are you asking? So, uh, it was only $4 and for $4, I mean, I think that's a steal. Um, I really just want this to go to a new home. I know it's all beat up. It can be fixed. I mean, it's a patchwork quilt anyway. So, I mean, if you add a patch to it or whatever, that's, you know, that's just adding to the patchwork. So... Uh, obviously hand stitched and everything like that nice and heavy it's big um, yeah I took a shot at a quill I don't normally buy those but I thought this one was pretty cool for four bucks I mean you can't really go wrong so there's that and I almost forgot this just a women's Bulova watch nothing special um, just battery powered little Bulova it was only 12 bucks I think it's like a $25 watch um, either my mom's going to take this and wear it or I'm going to put it in my watch slots and my watch slots, uh, always do really well. I mean, if you see any kind of watch, I mean, anything that's not Hong Kong, not Japan, not made in China, not whatever. I mean, this is probably made in China, but you know, it's a name brand. Um, just pick them up if they're, you know, if they're cheap, if they're a couple dollars or under five bucks, under 10 bucks, whatever. You can just buy a lot of them and then put them all together and take some pictures online and there'll be tons of people who want to buy it. So uh, just pick that up. Pretty cool. And the last thing I'm going to show here today is this really awesome giant cotton, I guess, flag. Uh, this reminded me totally of Paul Cantu. If you haven't checked that out, uh, his YouTube channel, it's, it's hilarious. Check out Paul uh, Cantu. He would say this is straight fuego. This is nothing but fire. It's got two eagles, big old eagle guy there, flaming eagle guy there, easy rider, 
looking motorcycle guy, uh, Confederate flag bandana, Confederate flag, American flag. Really big size. Just couldn't pass this thing up. It's way too cool. Uh, three bucks. You know, not a big expense. Uh, I don't know. This might go up in my room or something uh, if I don't give it to somebody. But look at that thing. That thing is super cool. It says Brooklyn, New York. Uh, I guess it's like RT or RJ. I don't know. 100% cotton made in Turkey. Um, so cool. Straight out of Brooklyn. Really cool like uh, motorcycle. It looks like almost a Harley Davidson logo uh, that they're using, but they're not putting the name there. But yeah, really cool. If you like this video, please leave a thumbs up. Please leave a comment. Uh, I enjoy reading them. Uh, thank you to all my subscribers. We're over 2,500 subscribers. I'm almost at 300,000 views. Just ridiculous. Uh, I really appreciate all the support. And thanks for watching.